What's up everybody? Do you have a small shop and you're wondering how to utilize the space in the most efficient way possible? Well, today I'll make it cozy. I want to give you some of my tips and tricks on how to maximize your shop's potential. Let's check it out. So my shop is 11 feet by 25 feet deep. And if you're starting out and you're going to start building your hobby, you're going to start building your shop out, you're going to start with your focal point, right? So your focal point, if you're a woodworker, probably going to be a table saw. If you're in fabrics and stuff like that, it could probably be a cutting table with a sewing machine. It could be a CNC. It could be a blacksmith station, a welding cart with your welding table. Point is, is that you're going to take your focus and you're going to build around it, right? So my focal point is an actual car because my shop is a one car garage and it's actually being used as a one car garage. What? So with that being said, I would consider myself an outlier, but chances are, if you're watching my content, you're probably gonna be in a similar situation, especially if you're starting out fresh. But not only that, funky fresh. So now that I got the vehicle out of here, I wanna talk about my focal point, which is the workbench. And this is a pretty good spot where I do a lot of planning. It's very conducive to my makerness. It was here whenever I first moved into my forever home and I haven't really modified it too much, which is kind of nice. And you probably noticed that I work here quite a bit whenever I'm talking about my videos and stuff like that. And if this is your first time here, I'll leave a playlist. You can check out some of my other stuff. But if you also give me subscribe, that'd be awesome. But let's move past that and talk about the meat and potatoes, which is optimizing your space. So the only complaint that I have about this workbench is that it is kind of deep as far as my stature goes, which is, you know, it is what it is. But if that's my biggest complaint, then so be it. It is pretty solidly built. It's got two by fours three quarter inch top, and also a miter station in the corner, which is kind of nice. Now I do have some tools here like the drill press. I used to have a bandsaw that was tinier whenever I first started out that I sold since I got the new one. I'll leave a link right here for the bandsaw that I purchased from auction, but more on tools in a different video that I'm gonna have as part of this like one, two series. One thing that might be in your best benefit would be to plan your own workbench. Like I said, it's conducive to your space, to what your hobby is but also make it to where it can kind of fold away whenever you're done. Sort of like one of those Murphy beds as you saw in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That's a great movie, by the way. But you could put your workbench up, the legs can fold into itself, and then it's just stashed away on the wall. If that's something that you can do, if that's something that you want to make, and it would also be in your best benefit in order to utilize your real estate in your small shop, that might be something you want to keep in mind. So since I don't have that focal point tool in my shop, I swapped them out a lot, which leads me to my tool wall. So the point of tool wall is that, you know, I've amassed a lot of power tools over the, over the years, and that's gonna be the second part of, of this small shop video, right? Talking about planning your small shop, but then also getting the tools in order to utilize them in your small shop, right? So be on the lookout for that. And I've amassed a bunch of stuff over the years without going into debt, which is very, very scary for some people, right? But what I wanna really reinforce again is the fact that I am pushing out whatever my focal point tool is gonna to be. Now granted, that's not gonna be the drill press, that's not gonna be the miter station because they are stations themselves. Same with the bandsaw that I just recently purchased. It's stationary, it's good where it's at, right? But the things that I do move are the table saw, which are on casters. I've also got the router table, which is on casters. I move out my scroll saw whenever I need to and also my lathe, but really what I do with the lathe is I just move it back a little bit. It's on casters as well, and the main thing is to tension the belt, which you see is loose right there. Keeping on, keeping on cruising with tool wall is that sometimes you have to utilize your space, which I did, like the joiner, the air compressor, and the disc sander. Now again, you may have seen in different uh, videos of mine where I had the disc sander like stuck up under a different tool, right? And if that's the case for like these small tools like this, then so be it, right? Because if you're not utilizing them, they have their space in your tool wall. But some folks can be creative. And for instance, like um, there is the, the double-ended tool mount that Pneumatic Attic had put out, right? You can have something to where you have one tool on the top, you flip it over and you got the other tool on the bottom like a table saw and a planer, so be it, right? So for this next part, I wanna take a step away from the tools aspect, and I wanna talk about your consumables and the hardware, things that you'll be using on a day-to-day -day basis. I used to have all my consumables and materials on the wall that had my lathe where it is now. And I have 
all my consumables here in this area, right? So I've got paint, I've got rags, I've got some different uh, manuals and books, and some other place where I put uh, staining stuff, stuff for like, you know, respirator, and then of course my wood pile in the corner there, and the flamethrower. Let's not forget the flamethrower. You always need a good flamethrower in your shop, right? Let's not forget. So this is more of just like a storage area. I'm not going to this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis or like an hourly basis, right? I'm not constantly staining, I'm not constantly painting, I'm not constantly needing wood, so I stuff it in the back here where it's out of the way. And in this area right here, it's right next to the workbench. This is the spot where I utilize my shelving in order to get all the materials that I need, be it like hardware and stuff like that. So this right here is just like a metal scrap bin. I don't wanna throw a lot of metal in the trash because people can get cut that way and you gotta be safe even outside of the house, right? But I have a lot of my hardware here, there's some crap. A lot of my hand tools go right here as well because it's just a nice handy spot to just grab them and go if I need to. And then again, I have a lot of screws and stuff like that, different miscellaneous hardware, sanding stuff, and then my electrical stuff down here at the bottom. Under the workbench itself, I utilize a lot of my plastic storage stuff right here. And then on the right side of the shelf, I have a lot more of my hand tools and stuff that I don't really use that often. I also keep my other table saw, which I exclusively use as a dado stack in case I'm doing stuff like that. I did have a shelf to the top left of the workbench as well. I keep a lot of my electronic stuff there, a lot of Arduino, small motors, things like that, so that it's all designated in the spot, right? This is all my electronic stuff. All right, another prime real estate area that I feel is a little bit underutilized in a small shop are the walls, right? Built vertically. So that could be shelves, cabinets, French cleats, pegboard. Now, my pegboard is something that I've been changing my mind about the most, specifically like where I want things oriented. And it kind of goes without saying, but the things you're reaching for the most should be readily accessible. So that could be right here, right? This is where I'm standing primarily. But all the stuff that I can't reach, that's where I'm putting all my self-made trinkets. So I've got like the buster sword, uh, my angels and airwave sign, and recently I made a little hornet mask from Hollow Nest because I'm a big geek. But anyways, display, right? And one thing that I've seen a lot in the maker community lately is that they're utilizing the pegboard with like a sliding mechanism. So one thing is sort of like the elementary school chalkboards from like back in the day, right? The things you're reaching for the most are going to be right in front of you, and then you slide that out of the way for stuff that you infrequently use, but it's also being used so much so that you still want to display on the ready, right? Another thing that I've been seeing in the maker community lately that's utilizing pegboard is to do it still as a sliding mechanism, but also like as a cabinet situation where you're pulling out A, B, C, D, and you've got like A is all of your screwdrivers, B is all of your chisels, C is all of your files, and so on and so forth. I think that's pretty clever, and that's something that you might want to keep in mind as well. Another thing you keep in mind is that if your roof is higher than mine, you could utilize a loft system. So again, if you're in a garage, if you're in a shed, and you're using utilizing it for storage, then maybe you put some totes up there and you have totes with your golf balls, your tennis stuff, your roller skates, whatever, right? But if a full shelf isn't gonna be in your budget because that can get you know pricey with today's lumber, right? You know what I'm saying? So one thing you could do is use like the T section where you have the tote lip that's gonna slide along that T into your space, right? So you got tote A is all of this stuff, tote B is all of that stuff, and tote C is all of that stuff. So you're still utilizing your garage as a garage, especially for storage like some folks, but it's not in your way where it's gonna inhibit you from making cool stuff. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about, upgrades. So this pretty much holds true regardless of what your hobby is, right? Woodworker, iron worker, whatever. And that's just upgrading your tools to make them beefier, right? So for my example, I have a chintzy table saw, I upgrade to the beefier Rockwell. Now, just the simple fact that, you know, they both run on 125 volts, but the Rockwell was clearly bigger than the one that I had before. So keep that in mind. Speaking of voltage, right? 125 volts for both of those machines in the US, I could plan to upgrade a 220. And I've seen a lot of folks in the maker community doing the same thing, right? They're upgrading their shop, they're upgrading their garage to 220 volts, and the machines just in general are gonna be bigger and beefier just in that aspect. So that's something you wanna keep in mind. One of the things that you might need to be upgrading in the future if you have a wood shop is dust collection, right? Do I have dust collection? No. Would I love it? Yeah, probably. But the problem is, is that like, uh, that's just another thing that I have to utilize real estate for. Most common thing that people do is that they're gonna stick that in the corner. And would that be good for my shop? Absolutely. Reason being, tool wall, baby, tool wall. So I could put blast gates, hoses and stuff and be like table saw, boom, band saw, boom, router table, boom. Lathe, boom. I don't know how I would do that. You need like some sort of collection, like a hood or something. But point is, is that that would be a really good thing to plan for. It's like, look, if I'm just starting out with a table saw, but I want to do X, Y, Z, 
tool wall, baby, tool wall. All right. Speaking of squishing your tool wall into the most efficient thing possible, one thing that you might want to consider also that I've seen a lot of folks doing online is that whenever they're building their space, they have a table saw with the router table all combined into one thing. Usually that's the focal point of their shop, but it's something that you might want to keep in mind as well. Right now, mine are separate. Would I love to combine the two? Absolutely. Is that something I'm thinking about for the future? Yeah, potentially. That could be cool. If there's something else that you thought of as far as upgrades go, and I know there are probably like 7,000 listings for upgrades, let me know in the comments so that you can let the community know that'd be cool. But this is where I'm going to call it for this video. So hopefully you learned a couple tips and tricks there or just something to get your feet wet for building up your hobby. If it's your first time doing it, it might seem scary, it might seem intimidating, but you just got to take it one step at a time, right? Eat the frog first to get the big thing out of the way. That way you can focus on the little stuff later down the line. But thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.